Hey guys, what's up? My name's Combat Man, and welcome back to another MK1 video. And in today's video, when I woke up this morning, I kind of saw a lot of people posting about the MK1 story character bios, and that kind of got me interested in wanting to post a video about that myself. So I went on to the official Mortal Combat website, and I found some bios too. Therefore, I'm able to show y'all and tell y'all about them. But before we get into that, if you guys are enjoying the MK1 hype, which I know a lot of y'all are, please make sure y'all drop a like on the video. And it just shows your support and it just really gives me the courage to make more videos for you guys. So if you could do that, that'd be great. And also, um, subscribe for more MK1 content in the future. According to YouTube Analytics, more than 50% of y'all aren't subscribed. For those of y'all who watch my videos, um, if y'all are watching them, please make sure you subscribe so that you can see more in the future. That truly helped me out a lot. And yeah, I truly appreciate it. So if you guys could do that, that'd be great. Now that that said, let's get right into the bio, shall we? Uh, by the way, before we get started, if you want to find the website, all you got to do is go type MK1. Type up one time at one website. You'll be on the MK1 website. Then you go to the three lines on the top, click game info. Then you scroll to the bottom, and then you'll find the new bios. And if you want, you can read them on your own time too, just to see what it's like. That's how you find the bios, y'all. Starting with a boy, Luke King, God of Fire. Having won control of the hourglass, Luke Kang restarted history. He neutralized the threats and dangers that had come before, crafting a new era in which all beings would have the opportunity to find peace. But that peace is now threatened by an enemy that Luke Kang could never have anticipated. It will take all of his wisdom and experience to save not only Earthrealm, but all of reality. Oh man, well this is big because this is probably going to be somebody that Luke Kang has never faced before. Probably going from the old timeline to the previous one. He's never faced this threat before, I'm guessing. And if y'all saw my teasing video about Onaga, the Dragon King could have a big shot at this. It can't be Shang Tsung because, well, he's a pre-order bonus, so I doubt he's going to show up in the story mode. If he does, that'd be interesting, but I don't think he's... I don't think it's going to be Shang Tsung. It can't be Shao Kahn either. So, I mean, Onaga definitely has a big shot at this, at being the big bad. But time will tell once the game comes out. I'm so excited to see who the big bad really is. It's going to be really great. All right, moving on to the Grandmaster of the Lin Kuei, Sub-Zero. As the Lin Kuei's Grandmaster, Sub-Zero, leads his ancient warrior clan known as the Lin Kuei in the defense of Earthrealm from external threats. For centuries it has been the solemn task, but Earthrealm hasn't been threatened in generations. That's a very good thing. And Sub-Zero sees no point in limiting his clan to prepare for dangers that may never come. Under his leadership, the Lin Kuei will come out of the shadows and fight for its place as one of Earthrealm's greatest nations, or great nations. Yep, so it's looking like Bihan is back in action as the Grandmaster. And this is actually a huge redemption story for him, really, because um, well, while Bihan was never really evil, he missed out on a huge chunk of Mortal Kombat thanks to Scorpion. But in this timeline, they're brothers now, so him and Scorpion are going to be able to work things out together and have a better history. So I'm pretty excited for the two of them. But let's see. I mean, Scorpion and Sub-Zero, they worked pretty well together in the past in MK11. And that was really great teamwork from the both of them. I can't wait to see what they do in MK1. Speaking of brother, look at who's next. The revered Lin Kuei warrior himself, Scorpion. Like his cherished father, I wonder who that is, Scorpion is dedicated to the Lin Kuei and its defense of Earthrealm. When his father died, Scorpion was Birifid. Y'all can correct me on that one. 
though he took pride in knowing that his brother Sub-Zero would succeed their father as the Lin Kuei's Grandmaster, but Sub-Zero's unprecedented moves to cast off the Lin Kuei's traditional duties have frozen Scorpion's enthusiasm. He fears that he may one day have to battle his brother for control of the Lin Kuei's legacy. Oh man, this sounds like it could get either good or it could get ugly. But based off this bio, Scorpion's really proud of Sub-Zero, but he doesn't want him to lose control one day of um, like the Lin Kuei like Sector did. If he has to fight Bihan, then it's going to probably be like Sector versus Kwai Liang back in MK9. So hopefully it doesn't come down to that. But yeah, these two, once again, they're going to be a really, great, a really great duo. So I really think that these two are going to work out so well together. But I hope it doesn't come down to a battle between him and um, Bihan. That would suck. Otherwise, Beyond could get killed again and turn into Noob Saibot again. Alright, up next, the Princess of Outworld, Kitana. Kitana has one purpose in life, to aid and protect her older sister, Melina, as she prepares to rule Outworld one day. The steady-handed Kitana ignores the calls of those who advocate that she should replace her impulsive sister as heir. Instead, Katana will defend the realm by fighting to make Melina the best empress possible. She will also fight to hide the dark secret that could end her sister's reign before it begins. So, basically to summarize this bio, Katana would do anything to help Melina become the best empress that Outworld has ever seen. Even if it means that she doesn't want to replace Melina, though I think she should, but hey, I mean, if Melina's gonna be a good girl, then I'd totally be in for her ruling Outworld. Though I would prefer Katana over Melina to rule over Outworld as the, the queen, but it's looking like Katana's gonna be Melina's right hand. And in this timeline, they pr Liu Kang pretty much flipped it, because in MK9, Katana was obviously born before Melina. Melina is a clone back in the previous timeline. Therefore, Katana would be the older sister of Melina back in that timeline. But in this timeline, Liu Kang flipped it around. It's the opposite now. Melina is older than Katana. And that made her the heir of the throne, first in line. So, yeah, Katana would pretty much do anything to help Melina in this story mode and in the game which that is true dedication and hopefully they don't find out that Molina has been infected because looking at the reveal trailer Molina does get a Tarakan disease which I don't know could explain how Kenshi could be blind I don't know if that's the case but maybe Molina might have done something to Kenshi to make him blind but anyway I'm gonna talk more about that once we move into Kenshi's bio but yeah Katana is pretty much going to be Molina's right hand in this game. Alright, up next, my boy and my favorite MK fighter of all time, Johnny Cage, the 21st century action hero. Like many stars before him, Johnny became addicted to his fame. Well, that was pretty obvious. He came to measure his self-worth by his fans' adoration and their praise of him on social media. Well, he's doing a really good job of that. But with his star now fading, Johnny is fighting an uphill battle to remain relevant. He joins Liu Kang's Earth Realm Champions, hoping that it will provide his career and his fame a, des a desperate needed boost. So my boy Johnny's trying to keep his stardom alive. Joining Liu Kang, a god of fire, could definitely help you with that for sure if you play your cards right. So I hope my boy Johnny gets that and it definitely looks like he's gonna go back to being what he was in MK9. Hopefully he gets his stardom back and he'll still continue to be the amazing Johnny Cage that I know up to today. 
All right, and my other boy, Kenshi Takahashi, restorer of his family's name. Once one of ancient Japan's most honored families, the Takahashis were decimated in battle. They lost everything, including the emblem of their power. The revered sword Sento, those who survived joined the Bakatu, a predecessor of Gatsu, for its protection. Five centuries later, Kinchi is raised on the stories of his ancient family's exploits, detesting his corrupt Yatsu's life. He pines to free the Takahashis from the Yatsu's grasp and restore their name. But for his family to follow him, Kinchi must first fight to prove that he can lead, starting by retrieving his spirit sento, the spirit of the sword. You guys won't be able to see that, but I'm just reading off the bio. Alright, so pretty much Kinchi also has another redemption story, but for his family, he's pretty much gonna redeem the Takahashi's history and in order for him to do that, he's got to find Sento in order to restore that history. So Kinchi's got his own redemption story here too. And I can't wait to get MK1 back and hopefully see that happen in the story. Alright, up next, the youthful warrior with dreams of glory, Kung Lao. Born and raised in the village of Finglalan, Kung Lao has spent his life toiling in the fields. It has been an honorable life, if not a glorious one. Kung Lao's greatest fear is that his life will amount to nothing. He prays fervently that he will be called to do something bigger. His prayers are answered when he is asked to join the champions of Earthrealm. As a warrior fighting for its honor, Kung Lao knows that his victories will be long remembered. Yep, so Kung Lao's pretty much wanting to feel useful and he finally feels useful once Liu Kang calls him to help the Earth Realmers fight for the safety of all the realms. So Kung Lao actually gets to do something great here, but at what cost? So I mean, don't know what will happen in the story, but if Kung Lao gets killed again, that's just gonna be really sad. But yeah, that's Kung Lao's bio right there. Can't wait to see what happens. Alrighty, and now the heir to Outworld's throne, Queen Molina or Kanda Molina, whatever you want to call her, born mere seconds ahead of her twin sister, which is Katana. Molina is the rightful heir to Outworld's throne, but even so, there are those who distrust Molina's impulsiveness. Can't blame them. They whispered that. Katana, with her dead your hand, should replace Molina as heir to the throne. As Molina fights for legitimacy, she hides a horrible secret. She is infected with the dreaded and lethal Tarak disease. And I wonder who, inf which Tarakan infected her. Could be Baraka. Who knows? Were her infection found out, Molina would be forced into battle to save her throne. So, basically, if Molina does not hide her Tarakan teeth, it's going to be over for her, and the rightfully so going to put Katana as the new heir of that world. And, yeah, pretty much, um, she just needs to wear that mask the whole time until they find a cure for her. And, I know I said I was going to talk about this in Kenshi's bio, but it makes more sense to talk about in Melina's bio, because in the trailer, as you guys saw, Melina was um, growing her rocking teeth, and Kenshi was actually in the scene, and that was before he became blind, so I'm thinking Melina might have had something to do with Kenshi being blind. Either she, he, she clawed his eyes out, or bit her, his eyes out, I, mean, I don't know what happened, but these are just theories. And I'm thinking Molina might have something to do with Kenshi being blind. So, um, I don't know. That's just what I'm thinking. But the story will have the real answer. Alright, 
and last but not least, Champion of Earthrealm, Raiden, in the village of Regalam. Raiden was known for his kindness and his charity. He was happy to spend his days tending to the fields as well as to his friends and family. So when he put his axe to leave Begurian and become one of Earthrealm's champions, Raiden hesitates. But he soon realizes that to best serve his village, he must join them. As threats to Earthrealm mount, Raiden must mature into the great warrior that Wu Kang knows he can be. So, Raiden is pretty much also going to be chosen to join Liu Kang and the other Earthrealmers in the battle to save all the realms. And Raiden is pretty much sort of starting out as a normal civilian, but is pretty much like their hometown boy. Then Liu Kang comes up to him and selects him. And Raiden is not sure about this, but he then realizes that he needs to actually take this quest to order to serve his village well. But yeah, I mean, we saw him in the trailer as well, so it was most likely going to happen. But I hope it comes out in a good result. Now, in the trailer, Raiden's still going to have his powers. It is confirmed he's still going to have his powers, but he's not going to be Earthrealm's new protector anymore. He's their champion. That job being a protector now belongs to Liu Kang. So it's kind of like they switched the roles a little bit. Liu Kang and Raiden. So don't refer to him as Lord Raiden anymore, guys. Refer to him just as Raiden from now on. Though he still has his lightning powers. Well, y'all, that is it for all the character bios in MK1. I don't know about y'all, but all these characters look so amazing. The render looks so clean and good. I am really so excited for the story, what MK1 is going to bring to the table, and I'm also really excited to hopefully get my hands on the beta version of it in August and play it fully on September. So this game is going to really do a lot of wonders for NRS and Mortal Kombat in general. So if you guys are not subject, I encourage y'all to subscribe because a lot of MK1 content is being released from this channel right now, and I doubt that y'all want to miss it, so please subscribe if you hadn't already. Um, you guys are going to get a ton out of this channel for sure with MK1, so yeah. Anyway, um, I don't know about y'all, but I hope y'all are excited about MK1 because I for sure am. You guys, um, have a great day. Combat Man sign off. Great to be a combat. I'll see y'all next time. Peace out.